We contest elections at the ballot box, not in the courts in this country. Uh, th that is true, but of course uh, we've never had a, form had a former president or a presidential candidate facing the kind of charges that the president faced because of his own activities. And of course the, the Attorney General in Manhattan has nothing to do with the Department of Justice. Finally, what do you expect from the sentencing process? I vehemently disagree that the district attorney in New York was not politically motivated here, and I vehemently disagree that President Biden and his political allies aren't up to their necks in this prosecution. I think the fact there's that no Biden evidence of that, sir, sir. There's no. There's no. I'm not going to let you can continue to say that. There's just zero evidence of that. You, you want to talk about political coordination? This has nothing George, to do. Right this has nothing to do. No, it's not. This has nothing to do with President Biden. Do you want to answer the question about the sentencing process or not? Oh, that's gonna hurt. As Colt leader turned convict in chief lies through his teeth, as if the internet isn't forever. They all said locker up, and I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me, and so I may feel differently about it. I can't tell you. I can. I'm not sure I can answer the question. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up. Okay. So what, for what she's done, they should lock her up. She's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. So crooked Hillary, wait, crooked that you should lock her up, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something, though, and it's very, lock them up. You should lock them up. Lock up the Bidens. Lock up Hillary. Okay, here's one. Just came out. Lock her up is right. You know what? I've been saying, I've been saying, let's just beat her on November 8th. But you know what? No, no. You know what? I'm starting to agree with you, I'll tell you. He's sending out his minions to do his bidding for him as well. None more so than this guy, attorney Will Scharf, who seemingly mistook ABC's George Stephanopoulos as a Fox News host that would allow him to spew endless disinformation. But as we've seen in the past few weeks, George isn't about that life, and he's not going to let any little lie slip through the cracks. His secretary of state called him a moron. Mattis says he doesn't even respect the Constitution. John Kelly says he's the worst person he ever met. Think about that applying to any other president of the United States at any other time. Their chief of staff, their defense secretary, their secretary of state, their national security advisor are the ones who have the most damning judgments of his competence and character. That is chilling. During an interview over the weekend, George Stephanopoulos interrupted an attorney for Donald Trump mid-interview after he falsely declared that New York prosecutors were, quote, politically motivated. And of course, claimed that President Biden was involved in the former president's hush money case. This came after the This Week host noted the locker up chance during Trump's 2016 presidential campaign, which of course on Fox and Friends, Trump claimed he simply never said, despite insurmountable evidence to the contrary. And of course, the Fox hosts were never going to push back on this, but George Stephanopoulos did. And rather than acknowledging these facts, Schaff suggested that Biden weaponized the Justice Department, a claim that other prominent Republicans have shared amid Trump's legal woes. We contest elections at the ballot box, not in the courts in this country. Uh, th that is true, but of course, uh, we've never had a, form had a former president or a presidential candidate facing the kind of charges that the president faced because of his own activities. And of course, the, the attorney general in Manhattan has nothing to do with the Department of Justice. Finally, what do you expect from the sentencing process? I vehemently disagree that the district attorney in New York was not politically motivated here, and I vehemently disagree that President Biden and his political allies aren't up to their necks in this prosecution. I think the fact there's that no Biden evidence of that, sir. sir. There's no, there's no. I'm not going to let you continue to say that. There's just zero evidence of that. Well, how about the fact that Matthew Colangelo was, stand, was standing over Alvin Bragg's shoulder when, when he announced this verdict? I mean, Colangelo was the number three official in the Biden Department of Justice who suddenly disappears and shows up as an assistant district attorney right as Trump's case in, in New York starts to proceed. After you want to talk about political made, there, you, you want to talk about political coordination? This has nothing, to do, right this has nothing to do. No, it's not. This has nothing to do with President Biden. Do you want to answer the question about the sentencing process or not? I, 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 I completely disagree that this has nothing to do with President Biden. Uh, with respect to sentencing, as I said before, we're going to vigorously challenge this case on appeal. I don't think President Trump is going to end up being subject to any sentence whatsoever. And we look forward to getting this case into the into the next court uh, and taking this again all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary to vindicate President Trump's rights.
Thanks for your time this morning. But what is facts ever stopped in? I mean, let's play a game of hypotheticals for a second. Say this was some huge conspiracy targeting the man found liable of sexual assault who's had more criminal accusations in his life than he's had affairs. What's their excuse for the plethora of Trump officials who have all also been convicted of crimes? Let me guess, all of their cases were also dark branding at work. <laughs> The man who Trumpers want us to believe is either falling down or falling asleep half the day, but he's also a criminal mastermind treating the entire DOG as an extended arm of his conniving schemes. Makes sense. His advisor and campaign aide, Roger Stone, was charged, convicted, and sentenced to prison. His White House national security advisor, Mike Flynn, was charged and convicted. His campaign advisor, George Papadopoulos, was charged, convicted, sentenced to prison. His business's CFO, Alan Weisselberg, was charged, convicted, and sentenced to prison. His business itself was found guilty of criminal tax fraud. And real estate organizations can't go to prison, otherwise it might have. Donald Trump himself has now joined that ignominious list. It now sort of feels inevitable looking back at it, but until it happened tonight, nobody could be sure it ever would. That said, he seems to know it was coming, right? He seems to have known something. There's this remarkable headline in the New York Times just this week, quote, Trump's le Trump leans into an outlaw image. As his criminal trial concludes, the former president has increasingly aligned himself with fellow defendants and people convicted of crimes. As we headed toward this unanimous all counts guilty verdict tonight, Donald Trump has recently, in fact, been bringing convicted and accused felons with him to campaign events, including people accused of murder. He's even been bringing ex-cons and convicted felons with him to stand behind him in court. And part of his message is, pick me. I'm on the criminal side of the ledger. Pick me and my criminal friends. We'll take care of this legal system that you've got here. Convicted of 34 felonies tonight. And this is the point, right? It's sure, the majority of MAGA supporters have an immense tolerance for swallowing snake oil. But most Americans can see through this ploy, hence why many of which have turned off even more so from Trump after his convictions. But this consistent effort to deflect blame from anything Trump related is even more laughable when you see who he surrounds himself with. I mean, even prominent sports host Colin Coward felt obliged to speak out on how ridiculous it is that Trump HQ expects Americans to believe that Trump's been targeted by Biden as well as the umpteen Trump officials that he's surrounded himself with who have all been convicted of crimes. I'm, I'm constantly being sold in America by Donald Trump. Uh, crime rates are skyrocketing. No, they're actually not. Starting in 2023, they have plummeted coast to coast over 200 cities. Violent crime rates are down. I mean, Los Angeles and some cities uh, may tick up in certain areas, but it's in America. He's selling me. It would be like watching your football team and they play well and win. And your neighbor says they're playing terribly and keep losing. No, they're winning and they're not playing terribly. Like you can't keep selling me on how bad the country I live in is because it's not bad for me or my friends. I have a friend that's a stay at home dad. He's not rich. I have friends who work part time starting up businesses who have worked at the same place forever. I have middle class friends. You know, Trump once tried to sell a vodka and acknowledges he never drank ever. He's never really drank alcohol, but he tried to sell a vodka. So I, I've thought for a long time he's just kind of a con artist. If everybody in your social circle is a felon, um, yeah, I don't think it's rigged. I don't think the world's against you. And to get people to agree on anything, 34 counts, 0 for 34. I mean, that's a that that's that's a batting slump even the New York Mets could be impressed with. 0 for 34. When you're constantly trying to sell me on an America that I don't see, I'm not saying inflation is not an issue, but I get on airplanes all the time and it's not a bunch of rich people. I get on planes, there's people in normal clothes that don't look rich to me and the planes are all full and the hotels are all full and the freeways are all full. That means people are going to work. You're trying to sell me on this story and this narrative that's just not true. Trump's entire game plan is the country is in a free fall. But when everybody in your team, everybody in your group, your cabal is a felon, maybe maybe the world's not against you. It's simply put, a convicted felon is who he surrounds himself with. Until now, no American president had ever faced a criminal trial. No American president 
had ever faced a federal indictment for retaining and concealing classified documents. No American president had ever faced a federal indictment or a state indictment for trying to overturn an election or been named an unindicted co-conspirator in two other states for the same crime. No American president ever faced hundreds of millions of dollars in judgments for business fraud, defamation, and sexual abuse. Until now, no American presidential race had been more defined by what's happening in courtrooms than what's happening on the campaign trail. Until now. The scale of the abnormality is so staggering that it can actually become numbing. It's all too easy to fall into reflexive habits, to treat this as a normal campaign, where both sides embrace the rule of law, where both sides are dedicated to a debate based on facts and the peaceful transfer of power. But that is not what's happening this election year. Those bedrock tenets of our democracy are being tested in a way we haven't seen since the Civil War. It's a test for the candidates, for those of us in the media, and for all of us as citizens. This morning, we're going to do our best to put it all in perspective and analyze what it means. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.